Yo, what's going on boys? So today's video is going to be a quick review of Showmaker's LeBlanc. This man had an insane run on his boot camp in EU West. He reached over a thousand points in Challenger with over an 80% win rate. Like this is almost unheard of. Nobody's really done these type of numbers. Um, and it's going to be super interesting to break down his gameplay, explain what he does, how he plays, how he abuses some of these high level players and punishes them to get the, the gold leads and push out for very quick wins. Um, he always seems to close out the games very quickly. Um, and uh, use that gold lead efficiently. So without further ado, let's get straight into today's video. Jumping onto the rift now, we can see the matchup is LeBlanc into Cassiopeia. The Cassiopeia is running Ignite. It's going to be a super aggressive lane. If the LeBlanc can uh, get level 3, look for an E. Um, that is the chain. Lee Sin comes through. It will be free ganks. Uh, take note, this win rate is duo, guys. This is not a solo win rate. These type of 80% win rates are really unattainable solo. Um, you cannot control the, the game, the pace of the game enough as one person, but with two people, you can. Um, so you see Showmaker, he's doing with Canyon, his jungler, and that is absolutely obliterating solo queue. For the rune page, he's got an electric good setup as always. Secondary is inspiration. See, W's in there. Does he get he gets the electric cute? Cassio's all inning. And he has the time warp tonic with the potion. You see the instantly. Um, getting some health back and in my opinion, this is a massive win for the LeBlanc. Why is this? It's because look at Cassio's mana. This Cassio just committed like 80% of her mana um, into that trade. She's having to pop two potions already um, and the wave is not even going to crash on a tower. This Cassio Pia has just pretty much just lost entire lane in my opinion um, through this early game. LeBlanc can simply just sustain it. CS a little bit, look for that E. Get You can even go E second here if you want. Set up a Lee Sin to come around. And I don't think Cassio can even get a base in. So it's like, what is the game plan of Cassio? Um, I want to see what the hell she does. Only one tick left. No Bickies either. It's really doomed actually. You want to W that? Oh shit. CSing on the tower on LeBlanc is always quite hard. So Cassio is up 5 CS in this early lane. See what Showmaker can do with it if he looks for an aggressive trade. But Showmaker's been pretty much playing everything. There's not a specific champion. As he hits level 3 first, looking for the W. Ooh, gets the W. Procs the Electrocute. And just chilling in this early lane. Um, I'm not sure if Darmon are actually going to make it out of groups. It's TL and IG in their group, and they all are very close together. Um... I don't know who I want to go out, man. I think all three, I wish all three teams could make it out. They're all really, um, like all, I love watching all the team. Like obviously I'm with TL. I want TL to make it through. I love Showmaker. I love Rookie as well. Um, you can see here the Lee Sin hovering. He could W into the E here onto the wave. W the wave into the, ooh, yep. Hits that E. There's no cleanse for the Cassio, as I was saying earlier. And it's just going to be a free first blood. Really good wave setup. The Cassio Pier didn't run cleanse. If you don't run cleanse into a mid jung duo, like, you don't know it's a mid jung joy, but if it is, you are donezo, and you have to respect them early on. Um, and he gets punished very hard. He'll shove this into a reset. A little bit awkward. He doesn't have minion demon, so it's a little bit hard to kill the wave. But it does crash. And that's... He's basing pretty short in lane. I don't think Cassio quite makes it. No, she's going to be quite far off. It's into the base now. Does he go Dark Seal? Dark Seal boots? Yes, he does. And he's going to run back to lane now. And a Sapphire Crystal. Looking for that lost chapter as early as possible. And a Control Mod. Control Mod. Control Ward. As every good professional mid lane should be buying. Cassiopeia literally came back to lane. Hard shoved into a full reset again. She should have enough for a tier now. She doesn't base. It's really doomed for her. She's like, what, 40% mana? And I wouldn't be surprised if this Lee Sin wrapped around for another kill. Cassio's looking for a roam top. Surely Showmaker. Showmaker's pinging. Where the hell is this Cassio? What is this Cassio doing? Um, so top lane's probably going to drop here. I wouldn't be surprised. He's just praying the Cassio. Cassio gets no assist, man. It's really doomed. She looked all that way in the river. And she's going to have to walk back. And let's see what this Lee Sin does. You can see him on the minimap. As LeBlanc looks to hard shove. If you see your jungler in river, guys. Looking to invade. Looking to do dragon. Looking to dive. Shove the wave. It's priority. That's what priority is. It means you can move first. 
if a fight breaks out, if you need to do a dive, if you need to just simply track the enemy jungler, this priority is the most important bit. And that's why things I can shove early are very, very strong, especially in competitive play, because it just means these objectives are so much easier to take early on um, in the early, uh, the early phases of the game. And that's going to be a five minute ocean. Of course, we all know ocean drake is the most valuable drake early on in the game. It gives you a lot of mana sustain. Things like the Rise, LeBlanc, Jin, they all benefit, man, from this sustain. Um, and at the end of the day, you don't have that much ability power early on for Infernal Drake to be really that efficient. As it scales in later game, of course, the Infernal is going to be worth more. Things like the, 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 uh, the Cloud, the Mountain in the mid game is definitely beneficial. But this Ocean Drake early is just the most broken thing for lane. Um, and you can see they picked that up at around about five minutes. Feels bloody good, man. As he shoves this under tower. What's he going to do? He has a level advantage. Rek'Sai is hovering. Does he know that Rek'Sai is here or not? Man, I want to see a dive. Show me a QRWE auto ignite combo, please. Ooh. Thanks, a tower shot. And look how he switches sides now. Look at that. Why does he switch sides? Because there's junglers on that side. Of course, it makes sense, no? Sticks towards his jungler. Rek'Sai would know him there. He's there from the... Uh, Trigger sense, tremor sense, whatever you want to call it. Nautilus is hovering mid as well. Something may break out here. As Showmaker says, piss off jungle, that's my ward. Oh, that's a beautiful hook by Nautilus. And the Thresh blows his flash. And misses the hook. Unlike he did. Oh, we're looking for the all in. The flash. Does that do it? It does tick, yeah? Beautiful all-in. I believe that was an empowered W to start with into a QWE. It's one of the best LeBlanc combos and underrated. Um, the Cassio doesn't respect it. Gets popped. Ooh. You can probably kill Thresh. Thresh no flash. Does he W in? Doesn't risk it. Not worth it. Gangplank ult is used. And I'm guessing he shoves this. He's going to be on it, sitting on a bit of gold. So he's probably going to shove, rote, um, reset for the Lost Chapter. And come back out of lane. As Rek'Sai is looking for a little bit of tempo going bot now. Interested to see what this buy is. And you can see those three biscuits. He didn't even need the biscuits. An absolute beast. Grabs a lost chapter. Grabs Sork Shoes as well. And this game is truly going to be spicy. The gold lead is actually in blue side's favor. How about that? It's all coming from the 20 CS lead bot side. And the Gangplank gold, I'm guessing, is where the lead is. Maybe a couple of platings bought, I can't really see. No trinket swapping, which is very strange. I think every good mid laner should be trinket swapping. Showmaker maybe doesn't like it. As they go one for one topside, Leeson picks up the gold. And I honestly think Showmaker has another solo kill in him. He's got a poke, he's got to look for a little bit of poke. Yep, there you go. Wants to proc the electrocute, there you go. And now you'll be seeing him on the next rotation. He'll look for an all-in. If he if he if he goes in for his W, lands his E, he'll Q um R. Lands the Q. Does he have ooh, two chain bitch? Going back in. Another Q. Ooh, turns out on the ultimate. And he's still his W's up now. Ooh. Not quite in range. If he had flash, he'd go for it. Um he two chained there just because he couldn't quite get in range. He wanted to juke out. Ooh, W. <laughs> I'm so hyped. He can W no go. Go. Get this Cassio. Oh, bloody, hey. Bloody good flash by the Cassio. At the end of the day, it doesn't mean anything. But I kind of liked, I liked the Cassio's aggressiveness. You can see she's still, like, Cassio's keeping up and farm. She's putting a little bit of pacing on the on the uh, lane, looking for trades. She hasn't quite given up. As the Nautilus comes mid and dies. How unfortunate. Showmaker will be, of course, pinging out the Cassio Summoners, guys. If, you've, if, you, if you watch any pro mid laner, they're tracking the timers. That's one thing that Challenger players do that a lot of diamonds don't. If my mid laner flashes at 5 minutes, I type mid flash 10 minutes. And I spam it. And I spam my jungler. I ping my jungler, I ping my support. Please roam for me. If they have no timers on something like a Cassio PR, I expect 12 people running mid at all, at all times, honestly. They're so immobile. No sums. It's free kills. 
Looking for that Luden's Echo now, running back into the mid lane. Lee Sin looking like again, I'm gonna get an early Herald. And this is one thing you'll notice these duos do. Oh, he misses the chains. So early Herald, okay? Lee Sin takes it very easily. And then guess what? You bring the Herald to your duo. So he brings his Herald to, to Showmaker. He drops the Herald and gives all the plates to Showmaker. Boom. Five, six hundred gold in the pocket of his boy. And his boy does very well with gold and will take over the game. And just as I'm saying this, he does it. The question is, does he share the gold? Get away! I'm picking my jungle. Get, get away, get away, get away. This is my play. Hey, hey, hey. Grabs the gold. He got solar gold as well, yeah. Yeah, buddy. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Enemy's trying to collapse. It's actually a tight game. The gold lead is still in blue side's favor. The Yasuo can easily carry God Monk. He's actually my boy. And when I say my boy, I mean just on my friends list. That's all I mean. I actually had a game with Caps today, guys. With Caps. I got unfortunately got craps and he went, uh, he had 2 and 10? 2 and 11? It happens, I guess. <laughs> it happens. It was me and Caps versus, uh, Perks, Mickey. And then I had Jankos on my team twice. And we both entered, but we won. Feels good. Try make a CS looking pretty good now. Gold lead is finally in red side's favor. Cassiopeia gets a kill, gold reset. Joe is going to commit for the platings. Still only like two minutes left for the platings. And he should look for this tower. He won't, he'll get this next plating, that's it. And just trying to harass, he'll slowly get this. Damn, this Thresh Yasuo combo doing work. Blue buff onto the Cassio. What's the move here, dude? Ends the chain. Looking for the ult turn. Ooh, can't quite get it. I love this matchup. This matchup, both sides have counter... Like, there's, there's, there's outplay potential on both sides. It's much easier, in my opinion, for the LeBlanc. But there's opportunities for the Cassio. Because if you W on yourself, when the LeBlanc Ws in, she can't, she can't W back. The ult as she Ws, she can't really react in time. Ooh, gets the shutdown. One more. Ah, Ryze is going to pick it up. Thank you very much. Naguri. I don't think that's actually Naguri. Probably fake. Try to make a basis. He's going to have enough for Lost Chapter here. And this is where LeBlanc really starts to hurt. I wonder if he goes a Soul Stealer. LeBlanc is one of the best users of Soul Stealers because she has so much mobility. She can, she can evade ganks. Um, she can pick and choose when she fights. And you don't really need to risk anything on that champion. That's why I pick it when I do the Pokemon challenges. It's just so easy to execute and so risk adverse. Who the hell pinked that? Is that a Lee Sin pink for Wardhop or? I wonder. Not quite. That's why a lot of LeBlancs like to go... Um, Minion Dematerializer, because like even though she has Snowboard, she has plenty of gold, plenty of AP, she still can't one-shot those backlines, so it's a little bit awkward sometimes when wave clearing. Having those uh, Minion Demons will make you one-shot that, make the wave clear much easier. A lot of low elo LeBlancs have like 2 CS per minute, I get so triggered. If you want to make LeBlanc work, guys, you've got to start hitting those like 8, 7 to 8 CS per minute. So you don't have to do 9 to 10s on, on LeBlanc, because you're roaming a lot. But if you're not doing, if you're doing like six to five, you definitely have issues. As Rexar's looking to go in, this Rexar's having a great game. If I'm gonna be completely honest. Godmunk flashes in absolute one v nine r. And LeBlanc pick up the kill, five kills now. Ooh, land the charm. Ooh, nice. Gets the thresh flash. Ooh, turns the alt. Oh damn. Showmaker's is on that. Uh, breaking some legs here for the Cassio. Cassio has no legs, to be fair. Breaking some tails, I guess you would say. Misses the cannon. God, it just it feels good when I see these players miss cannons, because I miss a lot of cannons. And I think to myself, do these players miss cannons? And they do. They do miss cannons also. Not just me, it's not just us lads. Everybody. So with that little tempo play, we are 3,000 in the lead for Showmaker's team now. And you can see how this duo works together, guys. Mid-Jung duo is one of the strongest duos to have. Um, he does go the Soul Steel. I love this. So aggressive. And you can see how they work together. How Showmaker's positioning is like... 
you just watch how what side he is on the lane, you can kind of get a tell of where the jungler is. If he plays hard towards one side, the jungler is most likely there. Sometimes um, he'll play towards the other side and he'll bait it out as though the jungler's that side, then do the other side. There's a lot of mind games that go in to high elo mid lane matchups. But here you can see he gets the roam off. Yasuo can't really do much. He has the shiv for wave clear. Usually PD is much better on Yasuo. Pops the exhaust. I mean, he's going to have W. Well, nice job. LeBlanc is too far in the lead. And look at this movement. She's getting a lot of movement speed from the uh, Magi Soul Stealer. When you get 10 stacks, you get a lot of extra movement speed. You can probably pop the Rexa. You want to go for it? Ooh. Okay, well. That's only with a two level advantage. Is that That's just kind of gross. As a W, this should one shot. Nice. And that is when, this is when LeBlanc starts feeling super clean. You can clear waves, you can rotate. This feels super good. You should be able to pop in here. Got to, he has to land the E. Dodge is actually, you don't actually, if you think about it, you don't have to land the E if you dodge out on the Q. If you, if you dodge Cassio Q poison, she doesn't really do damage. The damage Cassio deals is all through when you're poisoned. Trust me. Just juke the Q. And he'll kill this as well. Boom. Boom. Double W. No escape. Popping back and forth. Has W again. And he gets that kill. And look at that. 25 stacks. Really beautiful mid game. Coming out of Showmaker. He gets the lead and he knows exactly how to use it. He literally went from bot side to kill the Yasuo. Rotated mil, mid. Then rotates top. And now he's going to run back. How do you counteract that? It's very difficult. I'm gonna clean this bad boy blue buff up. The next, uh, the next buy is probably going to be a Banshee's. Definitely going to be a Banshee's, and that just enables him to W in with a lot, a lot more safety, like a big safety net. Honestly, um, he doesn't really need the hourglass. I mean, hourglass would be nice, but I don't think it's really necessary. The Banshee's just feels better. And I kind of want him to base just to make sure that he is going to be going... I mean, at the end of it, he has a stopwatch, which makes me think, hmm, maybe he... Oh, looking for the one-shot on the Cassio. Gets it. It's that stopwatch. It's probably... Ooh. It's probably actually worth to go Hourglass now because he's used the stopwatch active. I kind of want him to base and just see what he buys. A lot of these pro teams, and you'll see this in when you watch, like, um, competitive play... They buy as many, they all try and synergize their stopwatch and force fights. If three to four members of their team all have stopwatch, there's so much outplay potential. They win a fight in the mid game and they take over the tempo for a Drake. Like say Infernal's coming up, they'll all try and synergize the stopwatches, guys. And it's so, so, um, I guess, like it's just so unfair, honestly. If one team has like three, four stopwatches, the enemy team has none. It's pretty much an insta win as the Casio goes to Soul Stealer. Oh god, that is a very hopeful item. I really like, like, I know, I know it sounds weird, but I like Soul Stealer when you're behind. I like, I like, I like Soul Stealer. He does go to Hourglass. I love Soul Stealer. Okay, well, looking like a GG. I love Soul Stealer when behind because if the enemy team throws one fight, it's an insta win. So that's it for the review, guys. I hope you have enjoyed it. They goddamn popped off this game. Love watching Showmakers LeBlanc, and I'll catch you all next time.